Strap in, ladies and gentlemen, for we're taking a ride in the Fleet Star F2070A to see whether this old school starter truck can be used in the end game. If somebody left a Fleet Star F2070A outside the A Tribe Called Cars Castle, I'd be a very happy man. Sadly, this only happens in SnowRunner right outside your first garage in Michigan. Simply repair it or drag it into the garage box, and voila, you have three trucks in your fleet. Given that someone disregarded it like a used tissue or a SnowRunner debug kit, it's easy to overlook this heavy-duty six-wheeler. Especially as the GMC MH9500 you're given just before can also have all-wheel drive these days, one of the most powerful upgrades around. And let's remember that many of us ended up sneaking off to get the Paystar, Tega King, and Azov 64131, all trucks that can and will last you to 100% completion. A dream and a curse. Why? Because SnowRunner is a game about savoring the journey, enjoying what you have, going the scenic route, and then tipping over. The Fleet Star F2070A does all of that, including the tipping. Now it's not exactly dazzling in its freshly baked state, and the steering can be twitchy. It also likes to absorb damage like a damage absorbing thing. But a few choice upgrades make a world of difference to the Yeet Star as it's known on my Discord. Don't believe me? Bring on the 80s montage. Based on a real truck called the uh, International Fleet Star F2070A, I've actually seen these sell for a few thousand pounds at auction. This makes me very jealous of Americans. In game, it costs 30,000 odd credits if you ever decide to buy it back or get another. That's good value considering it plods along without complaining. It's unexciting but dependable, capable but not masterful. It's the table of trucks, you forget it's there but it can serve an essential purpose. In fairness, it does have one of the best horns in SnowRunner, and I like its styling inside and out. Produced between 1962 and 1971 by International Harvester, it harkens back to a time when you could smoke on planes, and health and safety meant having three pints instead of four before driving. Also, the upgrades to make it better are easy to get. All-wheel drive is next to where you find the truck, Meanwhile, the second best and S-rated SI6 valve 2100T engine lives in Michigan, as does the highly recommendable off-road gearbox and raised suspension that both make it less stuck prone. As for tyres, you only need level 6 for either the 42 or 45 inch all-terrains, and level 8 for the off-road UODs that are better in mud. I tend to use the UOD 1 or 2 these days. It can even have chained at level 12 for ice in Alaska, Lake Cov, and a Mandra, but just don't expect mud tyres. Only the spare wheel needs a high-ish level at 16, but it's hardly essential. Even the snorkel can be slapped on right away for 1700 SnowRunner credits, but it does sit lower down than a lot of other trucks. Naturally, yellow submarine moments are best avoided. As for add-ons, the last one you can unlock is the PC320 Heavy Crane at level 6. Not that it matters, because it's not really a great platform for this kind of work. 
You're better off using the flatbed, sideboard bed, metal detector, low and high saddle, or the new log carrier front and log crane. So what about Fleetstar F2070A customization? Well, it pains me to admit that some trucks are not good with curtains, and this is one of them. Unless you like your view being noticeably obscured. You also cannot remove the stock wheel fenders as you can on other trucks. There's also only one rooftop upgrade, the raised beacon, not to be confused with raised bacon, but at least there are three additional bumpers over the stock one, and you can slap on a cabin protector, external horns, side thresholds, and an angled sun visor. Take that, pimp my ride. There are also two exhausts, 10 rim designs, five paint jobs with stripes for improved performance, and all the usual bubble heads, accessories, exterior, interior, and windshield stickers, and hood ornaments for mangling pedestrians in a front end collision. Obviously, Truck King is the best customization option, and the worst is the just enough fiber brown and the smoke stained yellow color scheme that even the 60s would find too distasteful. But then one man's trash is another man's treasure. What makes the Fleet Star enjoyable is that it requires effort to maximize. Some trucks are point and shoot, the 73210 and 64131 Azovs being the most obvious examples. But here, you need to monitor the gears, steer precisely, pick a good line, and avoid pushing your luck. That makes it a great truck for learning the game, maybe the best starter truck actually. And it also keeps your skills sharp as a butcher's knife as you progress to Phase 1's Kola Peninsula, Phase 2's Canada, and Phase 3's Wisconsin. Of course, other trucks are better off-road, faster, have more torque, look better, and are generally more useful. But as I've seen while making this video, the Fleet Star is at least capable of living up to early game nostalgia. I mean, it's pretty fuel efficient, and you get 240 litres swishing about in the tank. Not class leading, but better than the ANK MK38, KRS58 Bandit, and International Paystar 5600 TS as standard. I also love the way the engine sounds. So, do I rate the Fleet Star F2070A? Considering it's free and one of the first trucks in your fleet, it can hold its own later on. Plus, it makes you a better snowrunner trucker, and even has its moments of being fun. This is despite the fact it looks about 200 years old when you get it, yet only has relatively few miles under its belt. The owner before must have been a worse driver than me. For such an old timer, we should be applauding the fact it's still relevant. Time may have moved on since brown leather seats, three-spoke steering wheels, analog radio, cassette players, and manual windows, but none of that matters when towing heavy goods through harsh terrain. Something it does competently. And that's it for my Fleet Star F2070A starter truck review. I hope you enjoyed it. It was quite nice going back to the start of the game again. More truck reviews incoming and some other driving game stuff, so stay tuned. And be sure to like and subscribe, as it really helps a tribe called Cars chug along. I shall see you in the next video. Take care, bye.